Today I'm going to go over a tutorial on how to use Uniswift to bring an FLA into Unity and then use that in Unity. So for now we have this nice animation by Trevor of this um, of this robot on stage. One thing to note is that um, one thing that he did very well is that every one of the every one of these uh, these instances of a movie clip or an object here is a movie clip. It's not a graphics clip. Okay, and that's really important. So if you want reusability for any one of these objects in Unity on the uh, sprite sheet, then it's important to create movie clip objects for these different assets of the body. Okay, instead of using graphics instances. So otherwise, it will just it won't reuse. It'll just recreate new assets, and you'll have a bazillion of them, and you'll have a huge sprite sheet. Okay, with that, we also have up here frame labels. So uh, we can go ahead and use those in Uniswift in Unity and access those with code, which we will show you in just a bit. Now to go ahead and get going on this, um, on the scene out here in the main uh, main timeline, the movie clip is actually on stage, but that's not what's actually important. What's important is that you have a movie clip that's standalone. And inside of there, you have your timeline of animations and so forth. Then in your library, you want to make sure you have a linkage identifier set up. So you find your movie clip over here, you right click and you go to properties and make sure that you have export for action script, export in frame one selected and that you give it a class name. And for this one, we'll go ahead and give it a blue alien brute one a D zero sheets. This is what we will see as a choice in Unity once we import this clip. So now once we're ready to go, you just hit uh, command enter, go ahead and publish the Swift. As we can see, um, it's going to animate right here. Okay. Now when we switch back over to Unity, and now we get, do you want to export this? Swift asset has been added. Uh, you can say don't export because you want to set up some other settings before you import it. But I want to go ahead and export it, so we're going to export. And at this point, Uniswift is going through and ripping all of the assets out to create a single sprite sheet like this. And there we go. Now, this is where you can see there are new duplicates, okay, of the body parts. It's really, you know, if he has a hand or an arm that's used, uh, it'll reuse that asset. And so we don't have a bunch of duplicates because he used movie clips in his animation. So that's a really clean uh, sprite sheet, it's set to 512 by 512. And uh, now we can actually use that in a scene. So first thing we do is we create an empty game object out here. And we'll go ahead and call this robot. Now the next thing we do is go to add component. Now you'll notice that there's Uniswift. And for this we'll just use a movie clip behavior because that's what this is. Now it'll add down here a mesh renderer and a mesh filter for you. So these are required with the movie clip behavior and it takes care of that work for you. Notice that there's nothing on scene and there's no Swift assigned. So to actually do that, we come down here and change, click change movie clip. Okay, so now that we have this up, if I select blue alien brute, it shows me whatever movie clips I have given linkage identifiers to in flash. And the one we want to use is blue alien brute one a d zero sheets. So I select that. And now we have a robot on stage. You can see that this information is filled out, gives us a swift name, the symbol name, and then we have other options here like go to and stop label or go to and stop frame if we want to do that from here. Uh, whether or not we want it to loop, we can flip it on the Y axis and so forth. Um, but this here right here is something to take uh, note of and the FPS, FPS is defaulted to 30. You want to set that to whatever your FLA is. So if we look back here, 24 frames per second and then we want to set that to the same. Now it should be noted that if we have let's say other objects on here, other exported SWFs, we can actually run them at different frames per second and so we're not tied to 24 for all the elements on stage which is kind of nice. Okay, You'll notice down here that it has now the correct sprite sheet applied to the shader and that's what uh, Uniswift manages for you. Okay, so 
Uh, with that, uh, let's go over here and we'll do, we'll do a demo here of this. So one of the labels is left down idle. And you'll see as it updates here in the scene view, in the game view, it takes us right to that particular um, frame label and stops. So we'll take that out. And now if we run it, it should run through all of the animations as it does here to the different angles. And then it'll finally uh, explode after it pounds the ground. There we go. And that's the end of the animation. So, as you can see, it's really easy to bring an animation in from Flash, and that's exactly what we just watched on screen, and bring it into Unity. And with just a few buttons, uh, we're able to uh, create that same animation right here in Unity. And now it's ready to go to be controlled via code. Okay. Now the way we do that, control it by code, is we'll go ahead and add a component here to um, to the robot. Now I've already written a, uh, a C sharp script called Robot, um, and what I'll do is go ahead and add that as a component. And we'll take a look at it. Go to Scripts, Robot, and now. Uh, you can see it's added as a component. Now, behavior is a public property, and what it's going to do at runtime, it will go ahead and grab this component of the movie clip behavior and um, add this as, a, as the target property. So go ahead and run it and show you. And there we go. So right now, it already has a, a reference to robot. It has a reference to this movie clip behavior, and we can go ahead and start working with it from there. Okay. So we'll switch over then to Mono Develop, take a look at Robot. And Robot extends base movie clip behavior. And base movie clip behavior is a mono behavior, but what it does when it starts up is it goes, it goes out and grabs the component of the movie clip behavior and sets the target to the movie clip itself. So back here you can see this behavior grabs this particular movie clip behavior and sets it to the movie clip itself so that we can work with it directly. So since Robot has extended base movie clip behavior, we're ready to go with the target, which is a movie clip, and tell it to go to and play the dead animation sequence. Go to the frame label dead, just like we would in action script, but we're working now in C sharp. But it uses the same uh, same nomenclature and the same API. It mirrors the uh, action script API. Okay, over here, now that we're back in, we can see, uh, we'll go ahead and hit play. And what it should do is jump straight to the dead, and it does. It dies. Okay? Now, I didn't put anything in there to stop when the animation hit the end or anything like that. Um, but as you can see, it does work, goes to the last, goes to the dead animation, and plays it. Now, one of the questions that was asked, uh, too, was that if we're in, let's say, so he's looking to the left. How do we switch it or flip it over? And the way you can do that is by setting the y-axis uh, 180. And he'll be facing now to the right. So through code, whichever way he's running or moving or smashing, whatever, if he wants to face right, you just set the y-axis to 180. If he's facing left, set it to zero. And that's about it. That wraps it up. So, I mean, Unis Unity and Uniswift. Uniswift takes whatever you've done in Flash, brings it right in, and makes it usable in, in terms of a sprite sheet, you can see right here, in Unity. There is one other thing that you can do. Right now, this is set to 512 by 512. Now, if you want a, a larger sprite sheet, you come in here to Export Options for the Movie Clip Behavior, down here. And you can change that to whatever size you want. So if you want more clarity, uh, you want re more resolution, obviously you can change it to 1024. And then you can re-export that in. And then you'll have a much sharper version of that image map. Okay. And that is about it.